Hello everyone and welcome back to Do We Know Them? You're here watching episode 46. I'm Lily Marston and this is Jesse Smiles and today is gonna be an interesting a one. A lot. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be a lot. And you know, this is our first Friday episode so it's fitting that it's gonna be a fucking dumpster fire. We made it. We barely made it. So we are gonna be covering the tart what would you call this i don't know uh, also quick side note i'm sorry that i have literally 25 80 cords. million <laughs> cords sorry um what do we refer to it today as um mm. <laughs> dumpster fire shit show mess <sighs> tart 101 <laughs> dude i honestly feel like we're going to class because lily and i are combining our knowledge here so she knows a little bit more about the origin of this disaster and i know a little bit more of like the tail end drama of it because i caught it on my for you page but before we talk about anything we need to address the elephant in the room lily's like which is he was like what's that <laughs> so this is a race issue right so this is like this has to do yes. with a black creator speaking up saying this brand was unfair to me um because x y and z reason whatever we're not black did you not know that I'm just kidding. <laughs> what? And also not even just about black creators speaking up about a brand's behavior, but specifically speaking up about a brand's behavior that has a reputation of questionable racial uh, choices, <laughs> I guess yeah. you could say. They've consistently been problematic in that area in the past. In a few different areas, even within that, yeah. because it's like anything from not having a very inclusive shade range for their actual products to then also like the business practices in like their employees. And then even also what we'll talk about mostly today, how their influencer trips pan out. Yeah. And I just want to say before we get into any of this, obviously we're going to have opinions about it because that's the point of this show, but I don't want it to be perceived as us like trying to speak over no. the exorbitant amount of black creators that are speaking out about this. Absolutely like not. our opinion does not hold pretty much any weight here at all. But the, you know, the show is to cover things happening on the internet and give our opinions on this. And I think that in a small, probably insignificant way, we do have some insight on the like creator aspect of it. I mean, you've been on a trip with Tarte. So do we know that? I, you know I, what I, mean? I like, didn't go to Dubai, but yes, I have been on one. <laughs> yeah. This should serve much more as just like a factual, like we're recounting what happened and telling you what other people have said about it rather than us being like, this is our opinion and this is what matters because honestly, like our opinion doesn't matter and you should go listen to the many black creators who have spoken probably much more eloquently than we will. A lot of the TikToks, rather than watching like the actual TikToks that people have posted, some of them maybe will watch like the reactions that other people had or right. like them dissect why they're wrong because also I feel like I've learned a lot just by listening to other people and like the different nuances of why this situation is fucked up yeah but then also there's quite a bit of it that I could recognize very easily on my own but anyway so that's just the the I guess uh trigger warning or disclaimer go in, we're yeah. not you know we're nobody okay we're just here trying to explain the tart situation if we even can because this is very convoluted and long and there's lots of things going on I mean my goodness yeah and as Jesse said we're kind of gonna have to work together to piece this all together because Jesse is more familiar like she knows who a lot of the creators are that are involved and I don't because <laughs> shockingly I don't follow a ton of beauty creators I was following more of like the trip up front and kind of like as I guess there's two trips involved here so let's start okay. there they've already recently been in the headlines for one of their influencer trips and it was when they brought a bunch of people to Dubai and that was like two months ago not did even did we not talk ago. about that no because it kind of happened in like in in between part of the week and we uh, just were like we didn't have a friday episode exactly so <laughs> but that was like huge i feel like everyone was losing their shit over that trip. well yeah and the drama with that wasn't to my knowledge i don't think there was a bunch of racial things going on but it was that people were speculating that tart like is laundering money or something what being like how can they possibly afford these trips oh no facts I and don't they know. were like breaking down the finances that go into like sending that many people to dubai because they also didn't send it wasn't like just the influencer they also got a plus one they all flew first class they were like this was a luxurious trip i mean yes but you guys have to understand that that is a tiny blip in their advertising funds that it's so insignificant to them even if it was 200 grand and maybe it was more that's nothing for them like literally nothing well exactly and honestly that was i wanted to talk about it last time but it ended up getting it was like gonna be old by the time we did 
because I felt like it was weird how much people were talking about it as if it was just this like impossible thing that they couldn't possibly be able to afford that and there had to be something like nefarious going on. That's kind of like, funny. The amount of money that other brands put into advertising, they don't. So then they can put that back into what they use for advertising, which is influencer marketing, which I don't think people necessarily realize how powerful that can be just and not even like this person posted this, so I'm gonna go buy the product they're using, but even just brand familiarity. I think that that was a huge thing for them. Brand awareness, it's powerful and people don't realize that's why people get billboards. It's not that everybody who sees it is gonna buy something. It's just now they know you exist and now they know that you put out something new. It's just awareness. Well, and not to mention that specifically, I think one of the things that they were striving for more with these brand trips, which comes into play by the fact that there's been two more in not even another two months, is by having these really luxurious fun trips they're not even getting like the normal consumer attention i think that their goal is to get the other influencers to be like shit i want to go on that so then this next thing rolls around and they call it tart island and they go is turks and caicos i thought they went to miami that's the f1 trip oh they went to another one there's been two there's the there's the island one and they did season one and season two bitch what is this love is blind literally that's i well, the first time i heard someone refer to it as seasons i was like that doesn't seem not, right that doesn't make sense that's the wrong word yeah no so they had this like house and i'm pretty sure it was in turks and caicos and normally i think they stay in like hotels with nice villas and stuff this very much seemed like they rented a very giant airbnb and then turned it into tart island oh. they have these like amazing social media videos that are like drones and the it looks like an ad for Firefest. The reason this first started getting a lot of heat was not even necessarily there's been a few aspects of the race thing that's come into play, but first off that as I mentioned, there was season 1 and season 2. But apparently some of the people that were on season 1 got invited to stay for season 2. So they got like a a double vacation and then other people were just like told to leave. You know, I, I do want to say really quick before I forget, I do remember discourse around the Dubai trip about there not being a lot of people of color there. I know Monet Michael, okay. is that her name, was there? And I know a few others, but when you look at the overall group, it was a little bit lacking in that department, for sure. And so I do remember even as far back as that, people were saying like, oh, there goes Tarte again, because ever since their Shape Tape foundation, so their Shape Tape concealer is so iconic and everyone used it at that time, like 2016, around that time. And when they finally came out with the foundation, the shade range was so a and so disappointing. And when people pointed that out at the time, I vividly remember, like basically Tarte was acting as if they were, I was about to call it Shark Tape Tape, but basically they were acting as if they were like an indie brand and being like, well, we're gonna like down the line, like bring more shades in. It's like, bitch, you're Tarte. How about you do it now? As if it's like a, oh, we'll do it once we can afford to kind of. And it's like, well, if you can't afford to, maybe don't make it. Exactly, a hundred percent. And also I think, think if I'm not mistaken, this might have been right before or just around the time where Rihanna came out with Fenty Beauty, oh, which is revolutionary 40 everything. shades, yeah. change the game. That is pretty much the bare minimum. It's like, if you're gonna come out with something, that's what you need to offer as a bare minimum because everybody should be able to try your product. Well, and one of the TikToks I even sent to you today was someone kind of dissecting how this isn't like a an issue specific to this trip or the last two trips. It's been like years this has been going on that it's been an issue for them. Yeah, and pretty consistently too. And she even pulled up an Instagram post from three years ago where it was like during the, like the Black Lives Matter movement when it was really full force. And it's basically Maureen kind of getting this kind of pledge together, if you will, of how they're gonna do things differently. But guess what? It's pretty much the exact same thing that she just released the other day. Maureen, stop making new pledges when you haven't delivered on the pledges you made three years ago, please. In my first post on Friday, and there's a playlist on my page where you guys can see it, I made a timeline to show just how intentional your slight to blackness has been over the last like six or seven years from your brand. And each time you have responded with this very same boilerplate response. The response today repeats the same pledge you made three years ago. It is still on your Instagram. We can all see it there. You posted it. You hope we would forget about it, but it's still there. There is nothing from a product standpoint, from an employment standpoint, from a brand ambassadorship standpoint that you have changed since then. You were bragging about a 5% leadership team that is black. That is one person out of 20. In my post from Friday, I also said I went to your company's LinkedIn page and looked at the employees and saw that nothing has changed since then. There was still just like 
one black person that I could find. New York City has one of the most talented and diverse hiring pools and any company that cannot represent that has biased hiring practices, period. Whether it's nepotism or cronyism or favoritism or just a very lazy HR manager who puts non-white names to the bottom of the pile. On Friday, the day I made my video, I went to your website to see if there was any evidence of how you fulfilled this promise. I could find nothing. I had to Google to see if I could find something and was finally able to track down a page, except it was a dead page. Your Black Lives Matter page, your Black Lives Matter Promises page was a dead page. How long was it like that? It's great that over the weekend you guys updated the page, but we're not asking for like a three-year-old page to be working as part of your commitment. Your job as CEO should be explaining to the people who actually own your company about the buying power of Black women. If your current employees are not smart enough to be strategic or build relationships, let them go. Stop playing in our faces. Bria has nothing to do with your inability to hire diverse staff. Bria has nothing to do with your inability to maintain your promises. At this point, including her in your scapegoating of your own failures is like problematic. I said it in my Friday video, you don't have to be inclusive. You don't have to center on blackness. You really don't. If it's a difficult and does not align with you, you don't have to do it. You don't have to promise it. You don't have to market it. You don't have to do it. That makes sense because it wasn't just Marine. It was every single brand because basically during the Black well, Lives yeah. Matter movement, everyone started kind of doing an audit on on how, okay, Black Lives Matter, great. How many black employees do you have? How many people of color do you employ? Like, oh, two in your whole fucking company? And how many of those brands that said that they were like making moves and making changes were actually- um, Making moves and making changes? <laughs> no, who, that actually went through and like hired a diversity consultant. Is that what they're called? None. They do have like coaches or somebody that could come in and yeah. Whom I just saw Maureen comment the other day. If you guys know and don't know, Maureen is the CEO. Founder and CEO of Tar Cosmetics. And I saw her comment, we're, we're jumping a little ahead, but I saw her comment on her post the other day that she's now hiring a DEI specialist, which I would love to know exactly what that is. But I imagine it's some sort of inclusive coach who could be like, don't but, be racist, but, but try on it. that <laughs> note, um, I just, oh, fuck, uh, let me send you, I'm like, sorry, you guys, this is gonna be such a mess of an episode because we're jumping all over the place. I mean, yeah, that's why we're only sticking to one topic because holy hell, this, we have a lot. Let me send you this TikTok that I just watched because it is very in line with uh, that little tidbit you just shared because she also responds to a comment that she gets and even asks the person that leaves the comment if they would be willing to consult. Watch this TikTok because I was dying. And I feel like this very much gives the exact energy of Maureen throughout all of this. I want to be so clear that when legendary black scholar of our time, Brittany Packnett Cunningham, blesses your page with insights and you say, this is super helpful, TYSM, do you consult? If you're unfamiliar with Brittany Packnett Cunningham, first of all, you should be following her. But second of all, I want to make an analogy for you. This would literally be like if there was a crisis at a Web3 company and Mark <laughs> Cuban came through and commented, as a Web3 investor, have you considered one, two, and three? And the founder and CEO wrote back to Mark Cuban, this is super helpful, TYSM, do you consult? <laughs> Isn't that great? <laughs> Not the TYSM, like Basically, girl. that's where like Maureen's responses fall. It's like, oh, okay, everyone else needs to help you with your problems. Honestly, even if she genuinely was like, that's so helpful, does she consult? I'm sure she has a business email, honey. Like, what are yeah, you doing? No, um, so Maureen's overall social media presence is just kind of like, honestly, a sight to behold at this point. I'm probably gonna sound like an asshole for saying this, but like, can we maybe ban like rich CEOs from having social media? Because I'm like, why? Like for what? Why do well, you and it? I feel like so many of the times she makes things worse. Like she's such an example always. of, They're I'm always like, gonna why, why are you still talking? Just, just stop. If you ever talk to a CEO about anything, any genuine issue in this world, they're always gonna make it worse with their opinion because they're so out of well, touch and, because and rich. Where and their money. priorities lie are not where everyone else's lie. <laughs> of course not, because their priorities lie within exactly. themselves. Okay, anyway, we're, we're getting off track. Yeah, it's like back to, back to the trips. Okay, so the Tart Island trip is where this all starts. So there are noticeably more creators of color on this trip, but that got a little uh, sketchy when some of the those creators had posted even during the trip and after that maybe they weren't receiving the exact same behavior as the rest of the girls that were invited, AKA the white girls. And by the way, I feel like also, I've seen a few posts that were like, can someone please explain to me how inviting the same 10 white girls on a bunch of luxurious fancy trips is helping you sell makeup? 
And I'm like, back to my earlier point, I don't know if it's helping them sell makeup as much directly as it is getting other influencers to want to get involved with the brand because they want to go on the trips. That's where I was like, I wanted to offer our opinions on it because we've both been on quote unquote, like brand trips or brands have flown us out and we've stayed at places for free. The benefit is, the creator wants a free vacation. Mm -hmm. And the benefit for the brand is that you, in taking that creator for free, will require a post. So there's a minimum of posts they have to do. I don't know what Tarte, what their contracts look like for these trips now, but if I look back to the one I went on, which again, I did not go to Dubai and also I'm not a makeup influencer, so. Didn't you go to New York? Yeah, <laughs> literally, I'm like, of all the trips, we went to Brooklyn? No, I was super, <laughs> super grateful. And honestly, even going into the hotel room alone, like the amount of makeup and products they give you, like I'm still, yeah, yeah, I yeah. still have stuff that I'm like, oh, thank God for that Tarte trip two years ago. <laughs> I got Tarte PR once and it was a box so big. I think it was like fucking everything. Exactly. They, They're very, they very generous with giving out their products because I mean, that's but the cheapest thing But I guess it's nothing them. to them. So, Exactly. When I think back to my trip though, I was trying to think back if there were a lot of people or any people of color on that trip. And honestly, I, the whole thing is kind of a blur and I was really drunk the second day. And it was like- I remember that you telling me yeah, that. Yeah, well, and that we weren't, it wasn't as isolated and like in a bubble as like these trips where they're all in a house together. We were all staying in a hotel and we weren't necessarily at events where it was like everyone was meeting each other. So I was just hanging out with the people that I already knew. I do remember though, they didn't, like a lot of brands, they'll be like, okay, you have to post eight times or you have to do this. And it's like very intense and thorough. This was very much like, you just have to post once at some point over the weekend and like have it approved by someone there. Mm. And it was very low key. Like they didn't tell you what to say. There wasn't a bunch of branded language that you needed to include or products. It just needed to right. be like you at one of the events. Well, when I went to Paris with with, uh, I think the movie was called As Above, So Below. It was like about the catacombs. So when I went there, we stayed in a beautiful hotel. It was amazing. I was flown out. I even wanted to stay longer. So they changed my flight back so that I could stay longer. Mm -hmm. And then I just kind of paid my way around, you know, Europe. When they did that, it wasn't also very hyper specific. It was more like, we want one Instagram post promoting the movie, one TikTok post promoting the movie, and that's it. Yeah. I feel like when you're doing a brand trip and it's not a paid thing, they're not gonna give you like a full brief, but they definitely are, hey, you need to do at least one post mm -hmm. or else. The, you know the, what I mean? There like, they're needs not gonna to be do it some kind of benefit for them, obviously. Yeah. But also I think the thing about Tarte is why they don't have to build that into the contract a lot of the time is because one, I mean, at least speaking personally, if a brand brings me on this like fucking amazing trip, I'm not gonna just like not post about it. One, because you're in a place to get good content. So it's like, if you're going to Dubai, if you're going to Turks and Caicos, no shit you're gonna be posting. They don't have to ask you to do it. So it's just whether or not you're confident enough that those influencers are gonna give you what you feel like is a adequate shout out in exchange for all of this. From my perspective, unless they've changed things, Tarte kind of is a little unique in the fact that they aren't really strict and they aren't trying to shove it down your throat and be like, you need to post this because they kind of feel like you will anyway. Now I feel like they have to be a little more specific also because this new generation of TikTok people, it's not, they aren't as well versed in doing brand deals as like the previous YouTube generation. So the first thing that comes up is this creator, her handle is Shoddy Sin. She posts while she's at the Turks and Caicos thing saying that she has the smallest room of everyone there. And she only put that, I think, in the caption. And it was while she was doing a room tour, which she was being very grateful and like pointing out all the cute products and the clothes and stuff that they leave in there for you. So she was like calling them out, but not in a, this ruined my trip and this is terrible. And she was never doing it because she was like, I need a huge room. But she was pointing out that in comparison to the other girls, it was like, she didn't even notice until she was then looking at TikToks and stuff and then realized that everyone else had bigger rooms. I didn't know about that, but that's extremely fucked up. I think that like this whole conversation that's been sparked because of Tarte treating people differently. And we'll get into the CEO's response to this because she does touch on this topic. As someone who's been on a brand trip and I am not, you know, a person of color, like I, have never really experienced anything like this. I would be upset if I found out due to like, let's say follower count, that there was some sort of hierarchy where you're inviting me, but I'm lesser than 
than the other people because I don't have the following or I am just different than Well, them. and it's interesting you bring that up because after this came out, Brianna Chicken Fry, who also went on the trip, she posted a response. And while I don't think she was intentionally trying to dismiss anything, she basically came on to be like, hey, I had a really small room too. And she explains that she kind of like understood that that was pretty normal because she doesn't have as many followers as the other people. Yeah, I saw that TikTok, bitch. And I was really annoyed. Well, I was just watching it and I'm like, I get what she's... No. Like, I understand where in her head that's coming from, but I'm like, how are you missing the other part? It all comes down to, and even like you said, like if you knew that they were prioritizing followers and stuff, I mean, and even I, I wouldn't say I felt out of place, but I'm not a beauty influencer. So then to go on a beauty influencer trip, I already feel like a little odd. I went as fucking Kathleen's plus one to the benefits thing, okay? I felt like a gum on the bottom of someone's shoe. A couple of things. It's one, I think people are like, be grateful, you got invited on a trip. I think a lot of people don't realize that yes, it is a paid vacation, but it's not a vacation vacation. You're working. And while Tart might not be someone that's expecting you to post 50 TikToks or something, they are expecting you to post stuff and you need to post stuff for your own. Like there's there's obligations that you have to fulfill. It's not a- It's not just about being expected to post something. You are expected and obligated to show up to the multitude of events that they have, which a lot of people are like, that's so fun. Do you know how draining it is to be around a bunch of beauty influencers? And really overwhelming. A lot of brands will like pack those schedules full and you're like, oh my God, can I like sit down for a sec? Like, It's Jesus. true. And uh, honestly, like as someone who, again, one of my really good friends, Kathleen Lights, went on a bunch of brand trips and I have been there in a bunch of like brand things with her and I have felt like shit because it's just like this weird ambiance of like everybody's like mm. it's very snooty I don't like the beauty industry at all like at all at all it does not I mean I don't know how you thought it's very one. like no one wants to say hi unless they know who you are uh, like, bitch unless... even if they know who you are ugh, you want the tea Manny MUA first of all he knew <laughs> not to not to be dramatic, but like he, okay, at Kathleen's 1 million celebration, I met him for the first time and he came up to me. He was like, Jesse, oh my God, I watch your vines. Amazing, crazy, whatever. Okay, cool, wonderful. Nice to meet you, Manny, bye. When I went to the Benefit Cosmetics thing, like a year and a half, two years later, where I was significantly more irrelevant, he was with Jeffree Star and he approached Kathleen. And when I tell you that I did not exist, I didn't exist, bitch. He literally like came up and they both like hair flip, talked to Kathleen. I felt so awkward. I backed away to the bar and just, got a drink. I felt so uncomfortable. Wait, and I was like, can I, Manny, can I tell you that I literally had the pretty much the same situation with Jeffree Star and Manny MUA? Yeah. Like literally it was, I had, I don't remember where I met Manny the first time, but it was like some, somewhere that I think I was with probably Jocelyn and Aaron doing a clever thing. And we met him. And then I think it was Aaron and I went to like the billboard music awards or something. And where we were sitting, I'm pretty sure Manny is repped by the same PR company that we had when we were at Defy. So any of the tickets they had would obviously be in the same kind of section. And I remember we went to say hi and he was sitting with Jeffree Star and both of them looked at us like they were like, who are you? Like Dude. just ignored us. And Jeffrey, I had never met in person, but he had even sent us a bunch of his makeup for beauty break and stuff. So I was like, Oh, it could have very well been that Manny was in his like diva era when he was friends with Jeffree Star because I can see that happening. Like he was kind of like negatively influenced by being friends with Jeffree Star. I wasn't even going to bring mine up, but the fact that you mentioned Jeffree Star, it's like, oh, that for sure was it. It was like once he was with Jeffree, he was like too cool to for say hi. For me to walk away because first of all, Kathleen has like extreme anxiety. I would never leave her at an event. For me to walk away in that moment, it was so uncomfortable for me. And I really didn't like to like, they went up to like, like Jeffree Star went up to Kathleen like, oh, hi. Like this and that, like almost like, I don't know if he touched her hair or something, but it was very much like I knew she was going to be uncomfortable. And I was like, oh no, I need to save Kathleen. But I was so uncomfortable that I was like, I need a drink. So I left. It oh was just God. a lot. And I like, she came up to me after and I was like, bitch, not Manny acting like he don't know who the fuck I am, bitch. It's just like, to me, there's like, maybe you didn't see me, but also I'm very tall and I was standing around there. You know what I mean? Anyway, but these events are very uncomfortable in general. To frame the events, like they that's kind of how they play out anyway. But then that's us as white girls. Yep. So I'm like, I can't imagine if you added that other layer on top of it. And then to have the kind of position of, do I say something or do I just like shut up and be like, grateful accept and like, what they gave yeah. me? Yeah. And that's where things started to get messy because I think people spoke out a little about this, but it didn't get as much uh, discussion. Well, 
I'm like trying to think. I'm like, there's been so many things. Cause this girl then also posted another TikTok where she, and this is where the season one, season two comes into play. She posts this and it says POV, you forgot to make content on the brand trip. Because if you look, she didn't really post that much while she was there. Oh, that's And like, meanwhile, some of the other girls were like posting constantly. So she posts that to kind of, I think poke fun at herself for not posting that much, but also kind of throws them like, hey, like, I guess people got to stay longer. Like she, I think was the first person to really bring it up. So that's the stuff I think from that trip. I'm trying to think if there was anything else, but I'm pretty sure the next stage in this is less than a week later, they have another trip planned to go to the F1 race in Miami. Nothing good happens in that place. (laughs) As a former Miamian, that place is haunted. The big thing here was, I guess, kind of even similar to the season one, season two of Tart Island is F1, it takes place over uh, the course of a weekend and there's three days and I guess there's qualifying races and then there's like the actual race is on Sunday. I'm gonna sound stupid. Is it like NASCAR or like horse races? (laughs) It's like cars. Okay, the first one. Okay. (laughs) Got it. (laughs) I'm not super familiar with it either, but honestly, I think that kind of plays into it though because I think Maureen was under the impression that like none of these girls are gonna give two shits about a fucking car race. They're just gonna wanna go to Miami. So what she does is instead of inviting a handful of girls for the whole weekend, she invites five handfuls of girls. <laughs> she basically divvies up the days separately. And I don't know if some girls stayed like all three, but there definitely were some girls that were only booked for one. One day? Yeah, like, and they weren't even necessarily attending the actual Sunday race. They were just gonna attend the qualifiers. Oh my God, not tart penny pinching. Right, it was like not relevant, but then some people are like, well, I mean, does it matter what day or Basically, these girls were told they were going to an F1 race and then maybe didn't. I don't know the full context of this first one we'll get into, but basically some of them found out that they weren't staying as long as they originally thought they were going to. So this is when this um, girl, Bria, posts a video and it has since been deleted, but... Oh, I didn't know that. I believe I have it. Before they even go on the Miami trip, this girl, Bria, posts this TikTok. So I was supposed to be going on a Tarte trip and I was gonna be leaving tomorrow to go to Formula One in Miami and I decided that I'm not gonna go. I've just been really upset today because even before I'm getting to this trip, I'm realizing that I'm not gonna be treated like everyone else there. I would love to go on a tart trip and trust me, I'm so grateful, but I have more integrity than to get all the way to Miami and realize that I'm being treated like a second tier person or like I'm being ranked. It just feels like a sorority situation and I'm not doing that shit. I don't care if this means that I no longer have a relationship with the Tarte team, um, but I I don't agree with how they're doing this. So the actual race is on Sunday the 7th. I was invited to come out from the 4th to the 6th. But initially in the email, it said something about being front row May 7th at the race. So once I realized my flights didn't align with the actual race, I asked them about it and they said, oh, don't worry, you'll still get to see like the practice races and stuff. But I have some friends that are going on the trip and I asked them when they were leaving and they all said they were leaving Monday and I was the only one leaving Saturday. So I just feel a little stupid. And I understand that my numbers are not like some of these other creators, but I just wish that there was more transparency up front. And I also, like I have a screenshot of what was said at the beginning of our email thread. So I just, I guess I misunderstood. But either way, I heard, I know that Cynthia had a similar experience and I just don't like that this is happening to people who want to be a part of these tart trips and personally I don't get why if they're going to do these trips they don't just treat everyone the same. I have worked too hard to get to where I am today and I will be damned as a black creator if I accept anything other than equal treatment on these on these trips and yes tart can do whatever the fuck they want to do yes they can but i don't have to accept 
So um, the caption to that was, as grateful as I am to be invited on a tart trip, I was sad to realize my experience was going to be different than my friends that were also invited. I've been on many brand trips and typically everyone is treated the same. So this caught me off guard and I wish I had the heads up. Entirely so, fair. So as you might imagine, this created a firestorm of yeah. both people defending tart and then also people attacking tart. And it just became this huge mess. And I just want to say really quick, I, I do find it like, very sad that she had to mention not once but twice that she's so grateful because like she felt like she had to do that. The thing is, is regardless of whether this was an intentional move of racial discrimination or not on Tart's behalf, it's gonna come across that way regardless of their intention because of their history. Like having done this in the past, there's a very valid reason why Bria would see this kind of issue pop up and assume that it is because of her race because that is how it's been in the past. So I don't feel like it was her trying to like come out of left field with some weird complaint. Like this feels like very valid concern that she even then doubles down with the not having as many followers as if that's a good excuse. Like, I feel like a lot of times it's just, I mean, the internet is such a display of how easy it is to judge something when you're not actually going through it. But how many people would feel okay with, this is not like a smaller room situation, which is a problem in its own. This is a, you're not even going to the events. Like you're leaving, you get to see the practice race, bye. Like how many people wouldn't be frustrated by that? I feel like everyone would. So two things, and then I wanna watch, uh, I one thing that I wanna watch the Marine response that she posted to this oh, because Lordy it's Lord. just amazing. Um, but I think that it's important to point out here that Bria could have very much not said anything for anyone trying to say that she did this for attention or that she did it for any reason other than that it was like such a- Like heavy on her heart and she felt exactly. like she needed to yeah, say yeah. something. The fact that she's doing that, not just for herself, but she wants to set an example so other black creators don't run into situations like this. And that is a, a very selfless move because she is probably gonna get penalized for doing this and she's standing up for the greater cause. Well, before we go any further, let's take a quick break, a little breather. Yeah, we need it. <laughs> to hear from our sponsors. Thank you so much to Drift once again for sponsoring this episode. Another repeat. I know. Are we on a roll or what? I feel like we're going places. I know. It's always really validating because I'm like, oh, we didn't do a bad job last time. I know. And you know, speaking of brands, sometimes working with brands can be great. Like working with Drift. <laughs> They're like, cut that out. <laughs> if you guys don't know what Drift is, they create air care products for your car and your home. Yes. And all the materials that they use are sustainable and their scents are made with natural essential and fragrance oils so like this little clip is metal it comes on this wood block and the wood block is essentially like soaked with the oil and let me tell you something I had it in my car last time and it lasted at least two weeks like it lasts a long time I know I personally eat a lot in my car so uh, that is yep, very know. beneficial for me <laughs> yeah and dude this month's scent also is so delicious it's giving like a very fresh man's cologne so if you're into like black ice you may want to go check that out it is so insanely delicious I love it and and Jesse just showed the metal one, but it also comes in a stone version and a wood version. The wood and metal are only $9 and the stone is 14. And what's really cool about Drift is that you can get it as a subscription service. So they're actually the sister company to Semford, whom we love so much on this podcast. Yes. And you can get a new car air freshener or home air freshener every single month. So you're never smelling disgusting. That's their motto, just kidding. And because the subscription <laughs> is super flexible and you can get different scents. Like Lily said, it's extremely flexible. So you can cancel your subscription anytime you like and it's just awesome, we love it. If you wanna try it out, click the link below and make sure to use our coupon code, do we know 55 at drift.co for 55% off for your first month. Once again, thank you so much to Drift for sponsoring this episode. Okay, back into the thick of it. <laughs> I can only imagine that people who are saying that I have absolutely no knowledge of how this industry works at all because when you do this, you are exiled from a brand. You know that. You know that going into this. You don't want to criticize a brand because you're done. But the people criticizing her and saying, one of the people, main people who said she was doing it for attention is another black creator <gasps> that then went on the trip. She calls her Jussie Smollett. Oh my God, okay. Can we get into that, please? Can we? Can we keep going? So first, 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 before that, because that one's gonna set I literally was like, excuse me? Like Ooh. what is going on? But first let's watch Maureen
Maureen's response to this. Which, before we even click this, guys, if you have not seen any of Maureen's more, I mean, all of her videos kind of have this general cadence to them, but specifically her like serious ones where she's addressing any kind of controversy, it's as if she is a robot and you have put in an apology script, like you uploaded your apology script and she's <laughs> spitting it you out. You told, what is a chat GPT? You're just like, uh, write me an apology no, letter. Literally, <laughs> yeah, totally. There we go. Clearing the air, it's Heart Island and F1. I woke up pretty sad this morning and- Okay, sorry, right off the bat. I woke up really sad this morning. Are you, what? She woke up sad, Lily. I mean, what do you want her to do? No, who else probably woke up sad? <laughs> <laughs> that just got me. I was like, okay, maybe we don't start as like a victim. As you're in your giant bathroom. Yeah, I just, I can't. She apologizes later for taking this lighthearted approach. I don't know if I've expressed this on the podcast, but one of my biggest pet peeves is people that do like any kind of story time or like they're relaying any kind of narrative via a TikTok or a Reels and they're doing something that like is taking away their attention from the story they're telling. They're brushing their teeth or they're doing that, but they're like half paying attention. I'm like, can you just finish that and then tell me your story? Like stop multitasking. I wanted to talk to you guys about a couple of things. We've had our share of mistakes and I definitely want to take responsibility for them. But sometimes miscommunications happen. You know, I see my team working so hard and I just want to clear the air on a couple of things. We have been hosting trips with creators for well over a decade and the biggest thing to me, like the most important takeaway is that they have fun. Like, oh, it's not about the Fuck you. First of all, I don't think that's your main goal with the influencer trips, but also I don't think you want them to have a bad time. Like I feel like so much of the stuff she says is like, yeah, no shit. That is such bullshit. And I just find it that if you're gonna sit here or stand here and do a get ready with me and try to be apologetic and try to be genuine, then don't bullshit us. We're not idiots. Your main goal to have influencers is for advertisement. Exactly, it's not just like you wanna hang. <laughs> yeah, your main goal is not for them to have fun. Come on, we're not stupid. The main goal maybe while you're there is to make sure they're having fun. But yeah, you don't wanna like enrage like influencers. <laughs> like, saying, we you know don't that. want them to have a bad time. Again, like no. she says the most obvious stuff. I'm like, that's not the explanation we need. Anyone that's been on a trip with me, um, what the laughing at weird that, parts. Sure. Oh my God. Yeah. Unsettling. I want people to be happy. I want them to have a good time. It's just like in my nature. Who doesn't want that? Her giggle doesn't sit right in my soul. I'm just saying. It's that it comes in at the wrong times. Yeah. 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 It's like chat GPT. <laughs> it's like giggle now. And it's like, well, maybe this isn't the time to giggle. <laughs> in my experience growing up in a house of seven with a lot of siblings, um, I just love having a lot of people around. So you know, when I go on vacations, I'm just very much like a more the merrier type of person. So when you're going on a trip in the house, not every room can be the same. And this is specifically talking, I think about the shoddy sin situation about the mm -hmm. room being small for the Turks and Caicos trip, because she's gonna say here, basically they're in a house. So it's not like all of the rooms are the same, regardless of how it's being chosen. Someone is going to have to get the smaller room, but it's like, if you've had a history of racial issues, maybe you should make sure that the person of color is not the person that gets the smallest room. And not only that, but like, have you ever watched an MTV fucking dating show like you can make it happen even if you had to put twin size mattresses like bunk beds in like multiple rooms so everybody had the same thing do it it's fine like everyone will be fine with that. It's just such an excuse. It actually baffles me too, because she says she has seven siblings. If you have seven siblings, bitch, you know that if someone gets a bigger room, it's a problem. Everyone's fighting for it. Like, you know this. So why are you acting like some people are just gonna have a smaller room? Yeah, and some people are gonna fight about it. And I mean, I don't know this for sure, but the reason they give the smaller rooms is not because that's just the last room they had available. It's because they don't think that those people are gonna speak up because they're just grateful to go on the trip to begin with. I think that brands rely a lot on that kind of leverage of like, we're bringing you here, be nice. So like, yep. you know what I mean? They don't put it in a contract where they're like, you can't say anything anything bad. Like it's not like you sign an NDA, but they mm -hmm. don't want you to say anything bad. It's funny you say that because that actually comes into play in a minute that possibly there oh is Lord. some of that stop involved. Uh, let's finish this. Oh boy. And for me, I valued having, you know, more people there as opposed to just having just a few people, a handful of people and having them just be in the big rooms and having the small rooms be empty. That was the end of the Tart Island stuff. So basically it's her just being like, we had a smaller room. Did you want me to not invite her? Like that, wow. that, that's how she's framing it is like, well, we could have just not made more her. sense <laughs> if you and maybe your like employees stayed in smaller rooms. That's what I would 
was thinking. I was like, given I don't know where Where'd they're you staying, stay, like Maureen? they they could be fucking in a pantry somewhere. I I don't know. And I do know <laughs> notoriously that Tart doesn't have like a team of fifteen people. Like I know that like one of the girls I know personally, and she's amazing, and literally would be her and like two other people doing stuff for everyone, and they're just running around like crazy people. So I don't doubt that their team is like strapped and working really hard. But I had the exact same thought. I'm like, well, where are they staying? Yeah. It just seems odd. So now she moves on to the F1 races. And this weekend we're going to F1 and I wasn't thinking about what's going on at the track. I was just thinking, how can we get the most people to just have this fabulous experience? But you told them that the experience was going to the F1 race, and then you aren't having them even attend the actual race. How many people watched this before she put it up? Like, that, this is insane. Right? And in her head, she, I think, was thinking, these are a bunch of makeup girls. They're not going to give two shits about this race. They just want to go to Miami. So we made a plan for everyone to have one day at the racetrack, one really nice dinner, and one really fun night at the club. So everybody was coming for the same amount of time and I was really excited to hang out with so many, you know, really cool creators. And every day had a mix of big creators and up and coming creators and nothing was decided based on the follower account. I mean, I wish I had the amount of followers that these creators had. Can we talk about that comment? Because I'm like, huh? That was the most cringe comment fucking ever. I just was so cute. I'm like, how is that helping your case at all? Like, what is you wanting that many followers have to do with you prioritizing them? I mean, I wish I was them. Yeah, we know, Maureen. We fucking know. <laughs> it's very obvious that you want to be one of the influencers. I don't think you have to explain that. Why is she so happy? I prefer gray sweatshirt YouTube apology over this. I prefer no tap apology over this. This is so annoying. She has a revision that comes out but let's finish this. I love that. And I thought we were gonna hang out at the VIP cabanas and really just enjoy that weekend. But it turns out that people really wanted to go to, you know, that Sunday race. That you had planned the entire weekend around that you told them they were going to. <laughs> Literally. And I realized that the things that were important to me are maybe not important to everybody else. She's like, basically like, I threw scraps at you guys. Why aren't you taking them? Like, it's like, I put you in a hotel. I mean, I told them they were going to the race. I didn't specify which race. They're like, why don't you go to the practice race? That's fun too. It's like, granted, probably nobody cares about the race, but that's where everybody, like, well, that's what they And that's for. what I was gonna say. I'm like, honestly, she's probably right that most of the girls don't really care, but I don't think it's as much as witnessing the race as much as you wanted them to believe they were going for the main event. And then you're like, oh, it's okay. They won't notice they're only at the qualifier. The team and I quickly adjusted we got a ton of extra tickets and so everybody can go to whichever day that they want. I'm all about lifting up others and making people feel good. So I couldn't imagine making someone feel sad. We've or, done it quite a bit. Know, just like hurting <laughs> someone's feelings. Even though I was feeling a little bummed, a lot of you sent me really nice messages. You guys are the freaking best. Um, it's going to be a great weekend. No hard feelings to anyone. And... <sighs> Oh, yeah, I love you guys. I didn't see the end of that. That is so unhinged. She um basically sandwiches that entire thing in she feels bad. She starts with, I woke up really bummed this morning and then ends with, so while I was bummed, I made the most of a bad situation. It's like after this one black creator tapped out and was like, no, I'm not putting up with that shit. Then you invited more to try and be like, look how inclusive we are. It's important to note that that is not speculation. They did in fact, last minute, after Bria had already spoken out it had become this whole uproar around the whole Tarte brand and Marine and everybody. They last minute invited a pool of black creators. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Are you absolutely shitting me? And just to prove that, Fanita, so if you don't know Fanita, Fanita is a comedy TikToker who I personally have been following for a very long time. I think she's very funny. I like her content, whatever. She posted this. Oh my God, Fanita, did she delete it? No. Probably. One of the craziest things is that once these uh, creators got invited is when things really escalated because then there was additional drama between them. Oh yeah, I found it, I found it. So Tar called me up yesterday and was like, hey, you wanna fly out to Miami tonight? I said, hell yes, I'm on the plane. And they got us first class. This is my first time ever flying first class. It was amazing. Like, I'm so sorry, y'all are so mad. Like, yes, yes, Tart likes me. Like, I'm sorry, like. Champagne was tasting good as hell in first class. It tasted better because it was first class. You know what I'm saying? We had a connecting flight in Chicago, and then we were back and headed towards Miami. And I just want to say this. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's always talking about how I talk and how I act. These brands love me. I have a personality. Get one. 
and you'll reap the benefits. I'm telling you, y'all. Y'all don't have to act a certain way for people to like you or to be like PC or whatever. You know what I'm saying? I act the way I act. And look at me. I'm in Miami for the Formula One race. And Tark deck me out. Come on. Are you? You're mad. You're mad. Like, I don't know what to tell y'all. I'm sorry. They gave me the hookup. They love me. And I love them. Thank you, Tar, so much for inviting me on this trip. This is my very first brand trip, and I'm so happy to be here, and I'm so grateful. And Lizzie, I love you. I have to say something as a Fanita follower <laughs> yes. for a while now. This is her cadence. This is her tone of voice. Every time she does something, she's like, oh, y'all are mad that I'm doing this because everybody loves me and type of shit. It's, it's, it is her shtick, you know? Like, that is something to note here. However, yikes. Like it was a really, really bad timing. Yeah, I was gonna say, had this had no prior race issues going into it and they hadn't been invited as seemingly, allegedly, a strategic token invite to then kind of combat any backlash they would be getting for Bria. I think that it would have been interpreted much different because I feel, I, I get the perspective that she's coming from is like, I never get to do anything. I'm not the usual creator. They invite on these things, but look at, this is so cool. But the fact she's doing it and going so hard to be like, look at Tart embracing individuality and stuff. And it's like, but that's not what they're doing. They literally, it's quite the opposite. And they literally, something that's so important to know is when she says, they called me last night to mm -hmm. fly today or whatever the fuck she said. Basically, this is a last minute phone call. They scrambled, they said, who's a black creator we can get here? That is so problematic in itself. And obviously I'm not saying even that Fanita ne necessarily like knew about that. I don't know. And she's no, saying no, no, that no, she no. didn't. And it's also something that's like, she's in LA, I know that. So she lives in LA. You're going to Miami, a brand calls you less than 24 hours before. You're not a beauty creator and says, hey, come here. You don't find that I, yeah, weird. Yeah, right? Like I've been on a trip before and I would there find it There needs to weird. be questions. The thing is too, is like even you being invited to Tarte makes sense because you were doing beauty break. That makes sense. Sure. You were using beauty products and you guys actually shouted out Tarte a bunch of fucking times. You know what I mean? Like you guys did it like on your office tour and shit like that. I don't know if people were necessarily taking my advice on makeup, so I don't know how valuable it was, but. Brand awareness it's, again yeah true but honestly fanita could have just recorded this seen the backlash from it and been like oh shit i didn't know i was basically being invited under this premise like i had no idea of that but unfortunately that is not what happened well where do we go first i think this is where my timeline gets confused because i think a day went by and then bria posts an apology <gasps> i haven't seen bria's apology let's oh let's my go with god that first jesus oh that's god. why this is all so messy so maureen posts that then bria like like a day later post this which is like where the whole concept of maybe ndas are involved like if there was because i think for the new york trip i went on i think there was a contract which i mean i could look in my email probably and find out i think there was a contract it was just not a very strict like the deliverables weren't really right 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 specific yeah. on it it was just more like okay you're coming sign this but i think i did sign something assuming that is the case regardless of what they would have signed i have to guess there's some kind kind of disparagement clause in clause. there. Exactly. Yeah, you're right. So I don't know how this next part came to be, but it, one, Bria's reading a script, 100%. Like there's no doubt. And not only does she like look away, but you can just tell it's it's something that has been formally prepared. And it very much is not putting any blame on Tart and kind of personally taking some of the blame back and just feels like she was forced to post it. Oh boy. Hey guys, so I just wanted to come on really quick and say thank you for your messages. Um, I wanted to update you that I've been in contact with Maureen and the Tarte team, and we are very much so on the same page with everything. There was miscommunication on both ends, and I recognize my mistake in responding so quickly and publicly, but Tarte has done a great job of working through the situation with me. So I know we're both glad to be moving forward in a positive way. Um, for my mental health, I'll be taking a break from TikTok. That is why I deactivated my account, but um, I'm looking forward to you know just getting in a better place and reconnecting with you guys soon. So, hmm. what do you make of that? Interesting. I don't know. I feel like in these situations when it's such a like bomb of pressure and influx of opinions, good, bad, otherwise, whatever, you just want out sometimes. And maybe she just was like, listen, the brand like said, sorry. The brand probably yeah. went to go lick her ass, quite frankly, like for lack of a better term. They were probably like, whatever you want, we'll do it because of the, the influx of hate they were getting. And she was like, you know what? That's enough. And I don't want to deal with this anymore. And I get that. I really do. 
I wonder though, I, I think it could either be that, that they like kissed her ass and were like, we're so sorry. Or then the other perspective is, do you think they came more with like legal action and were like, hey. No, I think there is disparagement like clauses and stuff in contracts that if a brand, uh, of course they had a contract, something, even if it's a one page yeah. or something and there's always that clause of like, you will not disparage us basically. Even if she had that, I think her, like her aura would be a lot more somber. And I feel like she would be a lot more like, hey, uh, you know, guys, let's really end this here or whatever. I just don't think this is the like way that she would go if she was being like cracked down legally. Like, well, I don't think that's And she happened. wasn't like throwing out a bunch of crazy allegations either. She was saying like no. why she interpreted what was happening. So I don't know if it could even be maybe... considered disparity. Exactly. I don't yeah. know if they could argue that it is. But the other reason people think an NDA might be involved is because I believe it was even Finita or it could have been one of the other girls they invited whose name is Nike. Her handle is Specs, Specs and, and Blazers. Blazers. Yep. One of them had said um, something about like hours of negotiations being gone on with Bria. And negotiations is such a like a contract term that it, it felt yeah, that like, that's why people right. kind of jumped to that conclusion. So basically Specs and Blazers aka Nike and then also Finita have gotten a lot of backlash especially now because basically they like were coming for Bria and as I mentioned I think it's Specs and Blazers. First thing she put says the real truth about Bria Jones and Tart coming out soon and then she tags Fanita. Fanita is coming out. Get ready. This vitriol has been all based on lies and we have the go ahead to publicly tell the truth. Okay, relax. First of all, what the fuck are you talking about? I mean about? literally. And then the next thing she says after 6 hours locked up in a room negotiating, the truth is coming out in a few minutes. Thank you God for her deciding to tell the truth. Referring her I think is Bria. Then she posts this and it says, I remember when this story came out referring to Jesse Smollett, who was in this photo, and I immediately called it as a lie. And the truth finally came out at Bria Jones and everyone internally knows what she did and hopefully the truth reveals itself. Amen. So she is implying. Not ending it with amen. I was so blown away by all of this. One, the negotiations thing is weird. Why are they involved in anything that has to do with Bria? And third, why are you comparing her to a man that literally faked like a violent hate crime? That is the most absurd comparison, even if Bria did in some world dramatize this or make it up. That's what you're gonna compare? Are you kidding? I had told Lily before we started filming that I used to follow Specs and Blazers on TikTok. So she is a fashion, kind of lifestyle influencer who talks about like a bunch of different topics kind of has this aura about her that's like I know everything about the industry it magnetized me towards her but then I started following her and she gave me a very cocky energy a very like just something and sit right with my soul so I unfollowed her and I told you that that first she posted get ready with me while she, when she's in Miami and at the end of it she oh let me pull it up she refers to herself in the third person and I was just like she does that a lot like, like specs the, and blazers yes and I'm like oh my god it's like, she's so good it's like, I don't know if you know this, but that's actually you. <laughs> and more importantly, know your strength. You're not specs and blazers. You can't do what I do. What? What do you do? You're not specs and blazers. <laughs> oh, cringe. Yeah, she always gave me that energy. So I was like, absolutely not. But that being said, this is an interesting approach to take because it kind of shows from the way that she's talking. And for if I know anything about this industry, that the people of Tarte are talking shit about Bria to her. Exactly. That's what it feels like. Well, that's what I brought up. I was like, why the hell are they involved in anything about Bria when I even heard in one of Fanita's stories or posts or something that she doesn't even know her? Yeah. So I'm like, why the hell are they involved in anything involving her? People are talking. It doesn't make sense other than yeah. there's like shit talking going on behind the scenes. Yep. But then that just brings me back to how did they reach that agreement with Bria? Again, why were the other girls involved? And why did they feel so comfortable just shitting on her. Because I think it was a mixture of things. I think to save face, they ran to Bria and said anything that she wanted to hear to kind of just mitigate that situation. And then they also simultaneously showed how they really felt, which was fuck this girl, to all of the other creators, especially it seems to the black creators who were like, can you basically believe they thought we were racist? You're here. Like that's what it kind of feels exactly. like. Exactly. Which is insane. <laughs> so then I'm not going to play it, but Fanita goes, on a live on Instagram and talks all about the tar trip. Oh my God, you're not gonna. Play. I mean, we don't it's have that much horrible. time. It's so long. Should we? Should we play some of it? Maybe we should play some clips because there was so like she shouldn't have done this live. She made so many mistakes on it. There is 
so few scenarios where if there's any kind of controversy going on, going live is you the correct, live. S- correct solution. Shane Dawson has entered the chat. Never, ever is that going to turn out good for you. No, ever. <laughs> Here, let's play just even the beginning of this. Like shading Bria or whatever. Uh, that's just how I talk. I've always talked like that. You know what I'm saying? Next. <laughs> Next. Bria is wrong in this situation. I want everybody to understand that. Bria misread an email and ran to the internet and pulled the black card. Also, I make all my content for black women. So for y'all to think that I would turn on a black woman for a trip is actually crazy. I'm interested to hear about the misunderstanding thing. Bria admitted to a misunderstanding, but I would actually like to, I mean, it's, I guess, none of our business, but what was that misunderstanding? Because from Bria's account, she went to Tarte, verified with them and said, so I'm not gonna be at the race. And they were like, no. So maybe the misunderstanding was that initially Tar told her you're gonna be going to the F1 like qualifiers, which who even fucking knows what that means? Or like an F1 weekend, but they didn't specify that she would actually be at the race. Exactly. So exactly. Like, Sorry, I didn't read between the lines and understand that you were shafting me. I feel like it's something like that, but I feel like it's such a harsh and inaccurate thing to say. Well, it's Bria's fault. Like I, I feel like when we're looking at it logically, they probably told her you're gonna go to F1 weekend at Tart, mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden she found out. But I'm not going to F1. What the fuck? That's annoying and weird and why would they even do that i also feel like it's counterproductive because i'm cuban right and like i feel like a lot of my followers know i'm cuban and i have a lot of cuban followers if i ever do something that disappoints them i can't say like well i make content like i'm always proud to be cuban like you guys know that it's like no but if you hurt a community you hurt he was them. like that's not even if you're part exemption. of it it's lacking like the ability to grow from a situation where you're a human being you're gonna make mistakes and obviously people are telling you you made a mistake here mind you Bria's already getting hate and you're unnecessarily piling on top of this girl and it's that people I think had started attacking Fanita and Nikkei no I saw it in real time Fanita's TikTok was literally just flooded I saw like when she posted it there was just a ton of comments of people just being like wow Fanita are you fucking kidding me like that's basically was the reaction well and I'm sure it was super overwhelming and anyone getting that much hate, I'm sure that's a lot and that sucks. Right. But I think the problem here is that she got too defensive with all that hate. And instead of just trying to defend herself, she needed someone else to place it on. Double so down. she had to shift it all to Bria and yeah. make it seem like she did something. When in reality, if you didn't know any of it and you just accepted this trip last minute and like you didn't realize the context behind all of these decisions that was likely fueling them, that's, that's different. That's one thing. But yeah. you're saying here, you're minimizing it and acting like it wasn't an issue to begin with and that Bria. Uh, just caused all of these problems, but I... Well, Fanita ended up posting a few TikToks kind of addressing people's reaction to her live because believe me, there's not a shortage of clips of things that she's saying that are pretty, pretty problematic takes on this situation. But now she recently addressed this on her TikTok. So the narratives that have been spun about me in the last 24 hours are absolutely insane. I'm not a coon, I'm not anti-black, I'm not a token. I'm not whatever y'all are saying about me. And unfortunately, the internet loves tone policing black women and y'all don't like the way that I talk. So I'm gonna keep this tone throughout this entire video as I explain what actually really happened. Thursday, my manager asked me to if I wanted to go to Miami because Tart invited me. I said, absolutely, I'm a comedy creator. We don't get opportunities like that. We don't get experiences like that. I was super excited to go. It was my very first brand trip. And that's valid. I was ready. I just packed my bags. I wasn't on my phone. Left, I came back, I posted my vlog of the hotel, talking in a tone that I always- So this is my problem. I'm like, that's fine. And I don't think anyone would like be faulting her for not knowing the context going into this and wanting to go on a free trip. Everyone wants to go on a free trip, that's fine. But once you find out the context, wouldn't you kind of be like, oh wow, now I see this through a different perspective and this is not what I thought it was. It's a different story, yeah. Talk in that is consistent throughout all my videos. And I posted it, went to the pool, came back, went on live, and somebody called me a token. Me jokingly saying, I'm a comedian. I say, all right, I'm a token then. Now what? Like, there's no way to combat that. I was being sarcastic. At this point, I had zero knowledge about Bria. I don't know Bria. I I didn't know Bria before But you do now. I didn't know any of her content. I didn't know that any of this was going on. I was just a person on a trip that a lot of people go on. Should have ended there. Yeah. I don't think anyone would be upset if you were like, I didn't understand. But you're saying that you do understand. Yeah. yeah. No, there's more. So I start seeing comments the next day under my vlog about me being proud to be a token. And I'm getting a lot of hate for this situation that all started from miscommunication. 
So once I realized this wasn't just a random attack and there was actually something going on, me and the other girls, we decided to speak to Bria herself and get the full scope of what happened. There were different girls coming on different days and everybody was leaving a different day, not just Bria. It wasn't a race thing. Multiple people were all leaving this, the different day. Not everybody was staying till Sunday. This goes back to, regardless of whether Tart was intentionally doing it, Bria's response was completely valid because of the reputation Tart has, where it would be completely understandable that Tart is doing that. So it's not out of the realm of possibility for her to react that way. A hundred percent, but it's also just fucking weird. Unless a creator tells you they don't have availability to stay longer, everybody should be staying the same amount of time. Why would you want to create that kind of hierarchy or weird fucking ambiance where some people are like, oh, like, this is so fun having this trip with you, my creator friend. Oh, you're leaving tomorrow? I'm not leaving for another three days. Like, it's like, why would you? It's just it is, weird it's in general. But ultimately, it's 100%, like you said, valid that Bria feels that way. And the fact that, unfortunately, Fanita had the time to reflect and didn't really make that connection of like, this isn't a one-off situation is unfortunate. Because that's the biggest thing. It's like, this isn't just an isolated incident where Bria spoke out because she felt yeah. some type of way. It was a bunch of other situations fueling the reason Bria felt that way and why she would speak up and felt the need to speak up to begin with. And then I didn't yeah. know that she made the joke about being a token, which I assume most of the people watching didn't take sarcastically and they literally were like oh so she's fine with it and that's why it escalated more and Bria didn't read her email correctly she got sent an, a mistake on an itinerary and instead of what whoa, whoa, whoa. that was contradictory she didn't read her email correctly but then it says she was sent, she a, mistake. sent a mistake <laughs> which was yeah it? which one was it yeah just going to tart to clear it up and and fix it she went to the internet and that's when the- No, she said she went to Tarte first. Yeah, she did actually. She said she sent them an email clarifying and they clarified and yeah. then she went to the internet. When the chaos ensued because Bria realized that she made a massive mistake and that's why she deactivated her TikTok account and fled. No, it's because she got a ton of backlash of people going, you should be grateful, you little bitch. I really hate when people speak for people who have removed themselves from situations. I've had it happen so many fucking times to me and it's so annoying. It's like, she said why she was leaving. She said she needed a break. It's pretty cut and dry. She was overwhelmed with the amount of hate, but you're putting a reason on her that she can't defend herself from. I don't like that. I find that like fucked up. And left us to deal with the aftermath. <laughs> You didn't know her, you said. How is that leaving you to deal with the aftermath? I guess she's saying because she took the trip and essentially took like Bria's spot or like- That's one not Bria's assume, fault. She's like, well, Bria should have like made sure. I don't even know what she's saying actually. Maybe you should be mad at Tart for using you guys. I don't understand how you would ever place any of that on Bria. Like mm -hmm. she got home before she even knew about Bria's involvement. Yeah. Us to deal with the aftermath. So as me and all the other black girls are getting a lot of hate, we, Including decide, Bria. we have to talk to Bria. We have to get Bria on the phone. We get Bria on the phone. Bria's very nasty and she's very rude and she's not trying to be helpful at all. She's not trying to rectify the situation. She's trying to get out of this. Sorry, I just am confused at what rectifying the situation means. What does she want? I'm also just curious on how Fanita wanted Bria to act in a situation where this is all like very fucked up and like, was she supposed to be your savior on top of it? I don't get it. That's, like, I, I'm confused what, does Fanita want her to go out and be like, don't hate on Fanita. Ex like if anything, you should be mad at Tart because that is why people are mad. Like it, I, it, it makes no sense to me. You're discounting anything she said. Why would she be standing up for you? I understand the whole situation of like, when you get a lot of hate online, your first knee jerk reaction is like, no, like what the fuck? You guys are crazy. Like, I understand that. And it's like, how do I make it stop? But exactly. like, Bria is not the solution there. Yeah, Bria is not the solution. Also, you need to understand that like, what Tart did to you guys who were invited last minute is not it's okay. It's too. It's not okay. She's not only dismissing what happened to Bria, but she's not realizing what's going on here. You were called less than 24 hours in advance saying like, hey, come. It's fine that you accepted it. If, you know, a brand that I loved or a brand that I knew about invited me less than 24 hours, I'd make it work. Yeah, I would say yes too. If I found out after the fact that, I mean, the only thing I could use is Cuban, but that doesn't even feel like it's relatable here. But like if a Cuban creator was like kicked off the fucking trip or something bad happened and they just invited me to save face, I would be fucking pissed. Ultimately, the person that Fanita needs to be coming for is 
Maureen and not fucking well, exactly. Bria. Exactly. And I'm like, that's why I'm confused what she thinks that what Bria is going to say to like rectify the situation. The situation that Tart so put you in? Ridiculous. Like, Bria didn't invite you. Bria didn't put any of this on you. You're putting a lot more on Bria. Like, it's very confusing. Um, what else? I guess, does Maureen have another one? Oh, the serious one. So basically, and honestly, our timeline, again, might be a little off because this there's just so many things. And also they're like deleted and there's captions that have changed. There's a lot of moving pieces. <laughs> but one day ago, we're filming this on Wednesday. So Tuesday, Maureen Kelly posts this as yeah. a follow-up to her original apology. Well, if you would even say the original one is an apology. She had like a freaking bridesmaid's dress. Um, I, who, who knows? I wanted to address a mistake that I made recently. I take full responsibility for a TikTok video that I posted responding to claims by a respected and valued tart creator. It was yeah, about so. a recent tart <laughs> event that was meant to be informative and conversational for me, but it definitely missed the mark. My choosing a lighthearted approach to a topic that deserved a serious response was definitely a wrong approach. I should have used this as an opportunity to address the unequal treatment of black creators within beauty creator programs. You mean yours? My post came <laughs> across as me not taking the issue seriously, and oh. I'm really sorry for that. As the founder and CEO of Tarte, I acknowledge that we have fallen short in matters of diversity, inclusion, and equity in the past. And I want to ensure everyone that I have heard you. And starting now, we will be taking the following steps. We're reviewing our creator have program you? and just making sure that it's inclusive and equitable. And we'll be updating it regularly to make sure we reflect changes that happen within the beauty influencer market. Okay, even that? What? How is the equality going to change in the influencer market? Isn't it just supposed to be equal? I feel like her fucking hands were like choreographed. She's like, touch yourself when you say me. Go like this and go like this. I mean, even the first, like, I want to take credit for a TikTok that I put. Well, I'm like, bitch, you posted it yesterday. And I, what I don't like here mostly is how she refers to the whole situation in very vague general terms. She never says Bria's name. It's all very cryptic. Value TikTok. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll take immediate action whenever we find inequalities or errors within our program. We're focused on fostering a culture of trust and transparency. Our creators are informed and empowered and can make the best decisions for their content and for their followers. We're also going to be more what? transparent about how we work with our creators, including how we choose them. I think that's not only going to just help the creators, but trust amongst like the industry as a whole. As the CEO, it's my responsibility to make sure everyone's voices are heard and respected. And I failed to do that in this instance. And I'm so sorry. I don't know if it's just because I've had three glasses of wines. Wines? Wine? Yeah. Not plural. I'm not sure. But like legitimately watching her feels like I'm watching an alien. Like it is so bizarre. It is so insane that she watched this back and was like, sent. Like absolutely post like that it's actually insane i mean i just even find the end of it, it hilariously ironic when it's like we respect the voices of all of the i'm like is that why you seemingly silenced bria first of all everything is vague the changes they're going to make are vague first of all you have to understand this is an issue that you guys have had for a long fucking time so it's obviously an issue in between your two ears do you understand so we need to work with that we need to understand like hey obviously i need some sort of deep programming literally to a certain extent because I am like programmed to be like shitty in situations like this or like to fall short. That's putting it lightly. And not to mention even how she phrases like how she's going to address the unequal treatment of creators will take immediate action whenever we find inequalities or errors within our program. So she's already trying to frame it as like, but when we do mess up, we'll fix it afterwards. And it's like, how about you just don't mess up? That wording just, I feel like hammered at home even more that it's always much more from the place of damage control, not preventative. A lot of this is not like, whoops, something slipped through the cracks. It's like, no, you guys made a decision and now you're having to reflect on it. How about you reflect before you make the decisions next time? And you also see her fucking eyes darting back and forth. She's reading a statement, obviously. Whoever her PR person is wrote it. And it's also kind of uh, pretentious or like, what is that word when they're like talking down on you? Condescending. Condescending. She has a very pretentious like attitude about her where she's just like looking down on you and being like, let me say this in easy words for you to understand. My honest opinion on it is I think that there really isn't an apology that's gonna land home with everyone. You know what I mean? There just never no. is. Like you're not gonna please everyone, but there are definite situations where I can view apologies in a more like, 
I can see a person as being authentic and genuinely being like, I wish I fucking knew how to convey that I am so sorry versus something like this. I think apologies come down to not even necessarily the apology itself. It's the acknowledgement of doing something wrong and yeah. showing everyone that you recognize what the wrong thing was, not that you're just submitting to everyone being mad at you. You know what a good, a really good example is and breaks my heart to think about Jenna Marbles. First of all, arguably, you know, a lot of people say she didn't have to do that. She didn't have to sit there and talk about the things that she did wrong in the past. But that is a genuine display of remorse, of yeah. feeling apologetic about something. And she did something that a lot of creators could take note of, which is not just apologizing for something. She held up a fucking laptop and showed you what she did. And that's a very painful thing looking like back as a creator and being like, I shouldn't have said that. Why did I say that? It's painful. That's a perfect example of like Maureen referring to this all so vaguely. Like that's the opposite of what she does because she can't fucking cop out yeah yeah it's a complete disregard of what you've done to hurt someone or what you might have done in this situation that was wrong my god this was such a fucking disaster and i feel like it's not over <laughs> like i feel like maybe there's more so here's the thing is we have to stop filming right now yeah, um yeah. i think we've gone through the majority of everything i just have a feeling we're gonna have an update on monday but i guess we'll see here let's end it on this because i don't know if this is still gonna be the top comment but maureen has this on her um tiktok from the tart island trip <laughs> oh 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 me uh, raquel uh, Poofa. It's just a random TikTok that she has with a creator, but literally all the top comments are, Tart doesn't even carry her shade. And it's so accurate. Dude, but they're right. It's true. If you know about makeup, you fucking know that shit's true. So yeah, we'll include an update if there is something major we missed or if something else happens. But I think generally we covered most of it, I hope. Jesus. Yeah. And also, you know, Friday's episode typically I think are going to look more like Mondays where it's going to be a mishmash if possible. But this was definitely a one episode topic where we needed to dive into everything because I feel like there was just so much and there's still so much we didn't even cover. Yeah. Anyway, if you made it to the end, gold medal for you. Wonderful round of applause. Love you. Thank you very much. Thank you again to Drift for sponsoring this episode. We love yes. you so much. Check them out if you haven't. And we will see you on Monday. We are on schedule. Look at us. Wow. Oh my God. Okay. Okay, bye. <laughs> bye.